Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry about that. I tripped on the cable as I was moving to get something. I really apologize for that. I hope it didn't scare you. It did scare me. I just cannot film that first part again. So sorry about that. I will continue. My teacher friends are going to tease me about this, that I need to find a new way of filming. I'm going to try to learn a new way this week. We'll see. Sorry. I wanted to show you some slides I have about the Great Sphinx of Giza in this PowerPoint. I'm going to show this here. In person, I would show this to you on a big screen. But since we're doing remote learning, we'll do it this way. The Great Sphinx of Giza is the name of the structure that I'm going to talk about today. Now here's a photograph of what it looks like up close, for real. You can see the head here. Because of its layer of stronger rock, it's a little bit more intact than the second part of the body. As I mentioned, it's considered a mythical or fantasy creature. This sphinx is the head of a pharaoh, scientists believe, with the body of a lion, a lion that's lying across the ground. If you look carefully, you can see the crown of the head. Some parts of the face are missing, and then it's kind of destroyed here. The background, in the background of this um, sphinx, is the pyramid, the Khafra pyramid. Scientists and artists believe that this was created, this is a drawing, was created about 4,000 years ago in Egypt, in what's called the Old Kingdom, when the pharaoh Khafra was the leader, or the pharaoh, of the nation. This is what it looks like today. This is called Khafra's Pyramid, and there's the Great Sphinx of Giza. And if you look really carefully at the bottom, you can kind of just barely see a bit of a lion's paw right there. This is considered a monolith, which means it's, it's a, a statue, a structure carved from one piece of stone or rock. It's over 100 feet in length. That's a long measurement in our time. And at that time, that was considered an extremely long space to have one, one structure carved from it. Here's an old photograph. It's the largest monolith statue in the world. And here you can see that sand hasn't even been cleared away. And that's where some of the interesting story of this structure is told. Now, if we think that this was constructed about 4,000 years ago, but for a long time, people didn't know where it was. Now, you've probably heard, because you live in Seattle, you've heard of rainstorms. Sometimes we get a lot of snow. Other parts of the country and the world get snowstorms. Sometimes here we might hear of a lightning and thunderstorm, but in the desert, not much rain, definitely no snow. They also have storms. If you think you can think of a type of storm that would be true in a desert, you can turn on your microphone and tell me. Sandstorm, yes, of course. Sand with wind can be moved around and then you have a sandstorm. Now, over 4,000 years, the sand around the Great Sphinx of Giza shifted and moved. Sand dunes, which are hills of sand, were created and then blown and moved to a different place and re-hilled. That's what happened to this. The sandstorm damaged this part of the structure that used to be carved to look like a lion's body. And sandstorms damaged the parts of the face that we can see now are missing. 
And it was only about 200 years ago, in 1817, that some Italian archaeologists thought that in this place, which was covered in sand, you could not see this 200 years ago, it was covered in sand, it was under a sand dune. Archaeologists thought that they read from ancient books that the Khafra pyramid had a structure nearby. And when digging and searching around the whole pyramid for feet and feet and yards and yards and many, many meters of measurement, and eventually slowly uncovered this sphinx. As they uncovered and dug, they were very, they were not using big equipment like shovels or, or bulldozers. Those weren't even invented yet. They would use tools by hand, small shovels and small brushes, until they gradually uncovered this structure. And here you can see some of the paws that would stretch out for the lion, and the damaged body, and the head, and here scaffolding because they built the scaffolding carefully and then carefully brushed away the sand. You can see the workers over here. They're this big. This is a very large statue. Until they gradually uncovered more and more of this structure. Here's a photograph from about a little more than 100 years ago very undeveloped. There's different things around here. The Khafra Pyramid, the Khafra Head, and the Great Sphinx. And this man is just sitting in front of it, thinking and admiring it. What a lucky person to have that moment alone with that beautiful structure. <clears throat> It's considered the oldest known monumental sculpture. And here it is. In this place, you can see it's still covered. This was an early photograph. There was still sand around here. They were still uncovering it. And you can really see how the sandstorm has damaged so much of it. Scientists and artists believe that is how it originally looked. Painted gold and blue. A beard below the chin, and a cobra snake symbol on top of this crown. This is the type of crown that Egyptian pharaohs might wear. You can take a look back. Okay, there's the crown. There's the crown. There's the eyes. There's the eyes, much more pronounced. There's the cobra. Nope. There's the beard. Nope. Those clearly were damaged in years of sandstorms, thousands of years of sandstorms, and then eventually covered in sand. But that's the scientist and artist's belief of how it really actually originally looked. Here's a photo from about 120 years ago where it's still partly under the sand. And there's a photograph from recent times, the edge of the pyramid, and you can see there's still beauty and design, but there's also damage that's still able to be seen. Thank you. Thank you for letting me show you that. The Great Sphinx of Giza. 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 Now let's come back to our passport and take a look at that. Right here. Having your pencil ready having your purple crayon or marker ready, and your red and orange ready. Fix this a little bit here. Okay. 
This is on page two. <clears throat> There's a photograph. Here's spaces where there are missing words that I left out on purpose. Let me read it so far, and you can read it with me if you recognize some words. This is hmm, Great Sphinx of Giza. It, hmm, hmm, old statue, hmm, Africa. People, hmm, to visit, hmm. So think in your brain about what words might fit to make this be correct. Let's look at the first sentence. This is hmm, Great Sphinx of Giza. If you think you have an idea of what that word might be, you can write it in the air. and say it out loud. Okay, right. This is the, where some people say the, T, H, E. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. Now that's a sentence, that's a complete thought. So that gets a small circle for purple punctuation. Not a big circle, it's not a big ball, because then it looks like preschool. And there's a ki kindergarten word here that we just added. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. There's also a kindergarten word right there. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. As I mentioned, we are paying attention to first grade words. The first word, this, is a first grade word. Let's underline that in orange. And the word of is a first grade word. Let's underline that in orange too. And then read this sentence. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. Good. Let's try the next sentence. It, hmm, hmm, old statue, hmm, Africa. Doing some thinking about what kindergarten, they're all only kindergarten words here that are missing. It, hmm, hmm, old statue, hmm, Africa. And let's see if, try some words here. It is, yep. It is an old statue. If I said oldest, we could then say it is the oldest statue. But it says it is an old statue in Africa. Correct. I, N. It is an old statue in Africa. That is a sentence. It's a complete thought. That gets a small purple punctuation right there. And let's go looking for kindergarten words. It, I left that one in the sentence, it is an old statue in Africa. Let's read that. It is an old statue in Africa. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. It is an old statue in Africa. Last sentence. People hmm, to visit. Hmm. People hmm, to visit. Hmm. See if you can find some kindergarten words in your brain that work there. People like. People like to visit it. Good. Noticing. Kindergarten words. People like to visit it. Purple punctuation. Kindergarten words. To, oops, sorry, like to and it all kindergarten words. People like to visit it. 
Let's read the whole page now. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. It is an old statue in Africa. People like to visit it. Well done. Thank you, travelers. Thank you for <clears throat> joining me in Africa with our new passport. I hope you take some time to look at the front cover. Look at the page that has people and flags and then the color picture, which I'll ask your teachers to send you. And then practice reading this page. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza. It is an old statue in Africa. People like to visit it. As with other projects, we ask that you please don't go ahead and work on the other pages. Please don't do that until the teacher lesson is shown and then you can work with them on each one of those. Thank you, friends. Best wishes. Happy New Year and safe traveling.